thanks for coming on the show. We appreciate it. I know it's been a long time, and we appreciate uh, TJ putting us up. So you're, you're from Greenville, North Carolina, right? Yep. And so back in the day, it was someone some of the kind of top there, but yourself, your sister, Patrick Gibson, and some other players that were doing really well there. Yep. Could you tell us a little bit about what the environment was like that? City like that, that could, that could you know, develop players yeah. like yourself? Well, it was actually pretty weird because um, it was just like one small, like a uh, little tennis, like athletic club that was producing like the players. First, it was Lauren Herring. Um, she like was a really good junior, won a bunch of gold balls, played at Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, she started with a coach named Matt Rowe, who worked at the place, and uh, and then it was my sister and me, and then this kid John O'Neill, who would practice with one of my good friends still. Um, and then we started like just with that group we started bringing in some more players even from raleigh like we get some players to come in and, and train with us in greenville um and then like patrick kipson came along and then patrick almost like since he started playing tennis so um it's been it's been kind of cool just like uh, a lot of players from greenville and then since since we all kind of left, I don't I don't know if too much tennis has been going on there. No, but, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing is yeah. there's nothing really there now. So yeah. like, you know, we we play in the southern section. Yeah. And Greenville was just you know, up here when the answer. Yeah. Like, so I think it's just neat that from one period of time, you know, you know, so many good players. Yeah. And then it just goes away, which is sad. Yeah. No, it, it is. But like, hopefully, at some point in my career in the next couple of years, I can go back there and do some events and try and get some some young kids playing again. Yeah. Awesome. Um, and what was your uh, sort of regimen back then? You know, how many days were you playing? Was it you know, a number of hours a day? Yeah, it was. It was kind of like. Uh, I mean, I kind of started playing doubles with my sister. I mean, playing tennis with my sister. Um, kind of just playing with like the old old doubles players. Like that's how we kind of started. And then um, with the like they had like summer camps and we would play like every day in the summer and. Uh, and then during the school year, when we get back to school, we play almost every day. We just like playing, you know. Yeah, we just, just like. It wasn't like, it was like an academy where you're there, you know, five hours not a day. Not at first, but then once, once like we all started getting better and better, like we could, it kind of like brought more people to the place to where we could make an academy. And then we had had a little academy there where we just like had us, and then like obviously there were like lower level players, like high school players, in, in with us, like getting in with us. Which I thought was cool because it wasn't just like the highest players, highest level players hitting with each other. It was kind of just like we all did like everything as like a as like a group, and we would do these games like uh, we called a volley knockout, where we have like six people on one service line, and six people on the other, and it didn't matter the level. It could be like the worst people there, and then the best people there on the same court, and it was like basically if you hit the other team, like. If you hit someone on the other team, automatically won. But every time someone missed, you get knocked out. So you're trying to hit the first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, like, so like it was, it was kind of just like uh, making all of our reflexes a lot better. Right. And, like it was just a lot of fun for me because yeah. I like hitting people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because we talked to Ronnie Snyder. He said that they, they did a similar thing in the end. Oh really? Where it was like he kept the game called kill. Oh. Okay. Like you're trying to kill somebody. Yeah. So no. Nah, like, so you got to make it fun. Yeah. So then. What happened? You ended up going to the USTA, right? Yeah. Your work. What, what, how did that come about? And what, what um, you well, I mean, it was just like I got a call from the USTA, kind of after 12 and under clay courts. I won the tournament there, and then I started like getting um, requests from the USTA to come do like weeks down in, in Boca and practice down there. And I was like, yeah, like this would be great. I'm practicing with like older people. So then I started going down there for weeks at a time for like a year or two. And then when I was like 14, um, went down there pretty much full time, okay. moved down there. Um, and that was like a really good opportunity just to practice with, with better players. And, yeah, I mean, it was good and it was like a lot of fun, but I wouldn't say it was as much fun as when I was home, you know, because yeah. like, it's really competitive, and they, they make it. They make more expectations. Yeah, they expect more out of you, and, and like um, I don't know, they, they kind of just kill you, you know. They make you. They make you yeah. hard. Yeah. And I wasn't used to that. I was used to just playing around with like everyone. But it's funny. We, we, when, we, when we first talked, we were actually about the route. We were talking to Coach Wayne. Yeah. <laughs> and he got a big laugh when he when we mentioned your name, but he said, "Yeah, Tommy." He's like, he "Wasn't the greatest practice player." Yeah. What was his, What was his go-to punishment for you? Coach Brady would just, he would just 
um, I mean, so many different things, but like, he would just abuse me mentally <laughs> because every time like I would come back to North Carolina, he would give me a, give me a bunch of, give me a hard time for, for my Southern accent. I kind of got rid of it. I, I would say the reason I got rid of my Southern accent is because of Coach Brandy. Um, and then like, I don't know, he would always make me do push-ups. Yes, that's, that's what he said. He said always. He, he said he did so many push-ups. Maybe that's why your elbow is in trouble. He did so many push-ups with that guy. And uh, yeah, I mean, he, he put me on the treadmill a few times too. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, different forward now. You know, you had that great uh, that spring and summer before going to college, where you, you committed to Georgia, mm -hmm. and then you had the good results on the clay at the French Open, a couple of futures. What was that decision about? You know, the game was just ready for, for, for the pro game. Yeah, I mean, I committed verbally to to the coach. Manny Diaz and uh, I told him basically it was if I go to school I'm going I'm going to Georgia mm -hmm. and if I have a great summer I'm going to turn pro and then I wasn't really expecting to win futures or win French Open I was just like going there hoping for like uh, gain some points in the rankings move up the rankings in the pro rankings and, and I don't know do like make some noise in the French Open and then like I ended up winning two of them with him and the other and then and then winning French Open, and I was like, all right, like, because before that, it was just different. Like, I didn't, all my friends, like, I saw all of them getting, like, a lot of uh, attention from, like, agents and, and, like, sponsors, and, like, I, before that trip, really, I didn't get anything. Like, I, I hadn't, I'd never talked to an agent. I'd never talked to, like, a, a clothing company or anything, and then after, after that trip, basically, started getting a lot of attention. I was like, okay, like, if I'm getting this much attention, I should like I, I definitely have a good opportunity to go pro and I, I right, don't know and you made the finals with US Open and so yeah, so yeah. all that stuff sort of go right? definitely for sure and now when you were going to go to Georgia were you going to do two sports talks I know they did a basketball video uh, for recruiting <laughs> that looked pretty impressive no. so you were going to try and play basketball there too no no no, <laughs> no that was that was more of a joke but oh, that would have okay. been cool I mean honestly there's I, mean, I love I love basketball. I play basketball almost every day. Yeah. Um, but like, if there's a sport that I, I think I could play other than tennis, it'd probably be baseball. Okay. I think I think uh, I was pretty good at baseball when I was younger, and then I, mean, I love playing basketball. And I'm, I'm decent at basketball, but like I think I would probably be better at baseball than basketball. You don't have time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm playing against big boys. Um, let's see. So. Um... One thing I noticed, you right left handed, right? Yep. So, are you ambidextrous? Just, just right left handed, eat left handed, brush my teeth left handed. It's just weird. And then yeah. I play all sports right handed. Okay. Kick right foot, everything. I don't know. It's weird. Because yeah, we're, we're starting to see some kids play ambidextrous. Yeah. There's actually, a kid that's on the Tennessee from Charleston who plays ambidextrous. Really? And so, and there's yeah, another kid that's very good at the four teams in our section. That's that's how we're trying to see a little bit of this trend. I wish. And would you? So, what do you think about it? You think it's it's, it's viable at this level? Wait, well, it's two foreheads, the kid. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Is there left-handed, right-handed? Sounds tricky. Yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't seen it, so like I can't really, I don't really know. Yeah. It could be great. Yeah. It could not work. I don't know. Okay. Let's wait and see. Yeah, exactly. So, a year ago, we saw you in Char uh, Charlottesville. We the lost in qualifying <laughs> to, to Petro as one of the guys who the show. Mm -hmm. And then you end up winning the tournament as a lucky loser. What's the mindset like as a rookie? Do you get a little bit more freedom there? Or do you feel like you're sort of getting a second chance and play a little more? Because you ran through the, the, the main draw. Yeah. And you're beating, you know, you guys two and one, two and one, two and two. Yeah, no, I played really well in the main draw. Yeah. It was kind of like, I don't know, I didn't I didn't play bad at all in the qualities. I, I really played really well, actually, in the qualities. I think I played Richard first round, and then yeah. it was just two matches in qualities, right? And that was three. Somebody, yeah, somebody else. Okay, well, I played Richard and then I played Petros, and I was literally just talking to my uh, to my old coach Diego mm -hmm. and Rado about um, that match because I, I was telling them I think that might have been one of my best matches in the tournament, and I played really well throughout the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, and I don't know, like I I thought that match was really good, and then losing that match and then getting another chance. 
um, and then go, oh, just, I don't know, just take a little pressure off and yeah. you're like, oh, I shouldn't be here, but I am, and just make the best of the second opportunity. Nothing to lose. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, and you went from, you know, like, say your ranking at that point was, you didn't play qualifying for the yeah. challenger. Yeah. You know, if you were playing, if the format was this year, you know, there's no qualifying. Yeah. So you would have been... Yeah. But uh, anyway, the point is, is you know, you're in the 300s, and now you've got up to 79. Yeah. So that's a pretty pretty good year. And no, just, ever since then, and I think what it was was PJ coaching you in Champagne, right? I'm, I'm he coached me. He coached me like from about June last year until now. Uh -huh. Champagne was the last tournament that we did together, but like, yeah, no, a lot of it, a lot of it was him, just because yeah. like not not as much like. Not even as much as coaching, just like more, um, like I was, I was in Orlando, I was injured and like, I was just getting down and like, I wouldn't say depressed, but just like sad all the time, didn't want to do anything, just wanted to stay in, stay inside, just play, play video games or whatever. And, um, I don't know, he just came, came to Orlando and was practicing there and I was like, yeah, like just come stay with me, like you don't have to like look for a hotel or whatever. And then he stayed with me, ended up staying with me for like six months and we like developed like an unbelievable friendship and relationship. So, I mean, that he, he I really, I really feel like he like helped turn turn around like where I was headed. You know? Awesome. That's yeah. Good. I was sort of joking at that. No, I'm, I'm serious. I'm glad, it was good. I'm glad that he he had that influence. Um, keep we'll wrap it up here real quick. But um, let's see. Give, give me your racket and strings and um, is, it, is it customized or is it pretty much just off the? So my racket is just like old. Um, old Wilson blade off the shelf okay. um, it's not the new one it's not the new one it's like it's like four Wilson blades ago I'm using that and um, string I used to use all Lux like alley power now I'm using alley power rough in the main and gut in the cross I did that for my elbow and I was originally just trying to do that for my elbow for like the process coming back to tournaments and then I was going to switch back to my normal strings um, once I started playing tournaments and then I tried switching back to my normal strings and the first practice that I tried switching back it hurt my elbow again mm -hmm. so just stayed with the gut and I actually really really like it just sucks it, it, it it's, gets expensive, it's expensive. Yeah, definitely expensive it's, it's, it's a rough setup for a gym it's, yeah. it's a little bit crazy no definitely, definitely. so what's your opinion who is going to be the next player other than the bow or joke with one of them I mean, hard to argue with Medvedev. I don't know. It's a tough one. I, I, I probably like probably him at this point. I really like the. Uh, I don't know about win a slam, but I really like Dimitar. Okay. Mark as a person and and in the uh, on the court. I think he's a really good player. Yeah. Just between you and me, I think he slides too much, right? <laughs> you saw that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was good. Good stuff. <laughs> but do you agree that sliding is bad footwork? I mean, I don't know. You can argue both ways because obviously him and Monfils are probably the best movers on tour and they both slide like crazy. But hard to argue that Fed's not one of the most. Right, yeah. Like, yeah one of the best movers, too. I mean, he, he runs through all the shots. I don't know. I think it's just like the way you do it, yeah. I guess. It works, it works for them. Yeah. Um, and last thing, um, advice to young players. I don't know, just, just have fun and uh, I don't know, I think it's just all about experience like at a young age and like competing at a young age in a bunch of tournaments, playing a lot of tournaments and, and seeing different things like once you're at the level of uh, playing ITS, I would say go play some ITS out of country, go play ITS on clay. Play, play on grass, like play on all, all the surfaces. I mean, I think that's one of the things this year that helped me a ton was I, I was playing well on the clay before going to the summer on clay. And then yeah. after the summer on clay, I went to grass. And like, that, that was kind of my first time that I played a full schedule of grass. I played like three grass tournaments. And I really think for the, the year, the rest of the year after grass, it really helped me just uh, seeing the court differently and, and playing different balls. I wouldn't normally play on hard, but since I had the grass court experience, it helped me. So I would just say, like, get in the experience on in everything that you can, you know? Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs>